slowly by slowly we are going to start to transition into the healing service here and I want to say that we will worship a little bit and then at a certain point everything is going to change here everything will now change in this place but this time we are sitting on the verge of a major visitation that the Lord is going to visit people here in a very major way everybody now beginning from here look at that now lift them oh! there is a visitation here the glory of the Lord is here As we are still standing in Isaiah 35 I am now reading 8 and 9 it says and a highway will be there it will be called the way of holiness and he says the unclean will not journey on it it will be for those who walk in that way that lifestyle that way and he goes on to say wicked fools will not go about on it no lion will be there nor any ferocious beast will be upon it and he says but only the redeemed of the lord will walk there will be there and he finishes by saying and the ransomed of the Lord will return. Hallelujah. Listen to me now. He says, and the highway will be there. It will be known as the way of holiness. The highway of holiness. And then he describes the people that will be there. And he says, no ferocious beasts that harm you will be on that way. If you get aboard, you get on that way. So beloved people, we have now come to such a time in the history of the church that that highway is now being constructed. Hallelujah. 
And that highway is passing here today. Even as that highway passes here, the call has been made. The call is being made from today on for you to come on that highway, to come aboard, so that we may go to the destination of holiness. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you very much. Can we be seated before the Lord? Now, I want to begin by saying that the Lord has spoken with me. The reason I come to you on this day is because the Lord Jehovah, our Father, He has spoken with me. And in that conversation that He has had with me, He has spoken about a very, very important event, which is really going to be our theme tonight here. And in talking about that very, very important event, he has actually spoken to me about the glorious coming of the Messiah. So that really is what we are going to major on. And as I begin to share each of the individual specific conversations on the coming of the Messiah, I want right from the beginning that we appreciate one thing. That in that sharing, even as I bring the revelation also to you, you will find that the Lord is handing down an instruction to the pulpit, to the church in this land. So even as he has spoken with me about the glorious coming of the Messiah, there is an instruction to the church. And that is really what is taking me globally to many nations. And today I have reached this station here called Namibia. Hallelujah. Now, I want to go step by step to talk about what the Lord has said and shared on the glorious coming of the Messiah. But before I begin that, as has been said, I can repeat this, that underneath, beneath this conversation is a tremendous revival, is a historic revival. So, even as you bear yourself, you start to receive that message and you begin to reorientate yourself towards this message, don't lose the key fact that there is a very serious underlying revival because it's about rebuking sin and cleaning up the church to prepare her for the owner of the church, for he that died for the church, for the king of kings, right? For the Lord to come to a glorious church. And we all agree that he befits. For the great works he did at Calvary, surely he deserves a glorious church, right? And so, as I begin to share that, and begin to point out the areas he has shown me, remember before I come to a country like I am here, I am already here. I think for more than two weeks now, the Lord has been bringing me all over this country. So before I even come, I know so much. He brings me and he points out the specific things. So even as the Lord points out those things that constitute sin and wickedness in the land, that demand repentance so that we may be right with him, even as he does that, let us not lose the fact that beneath is a tremendous historic revival. The winning of souls and everything you see happening to Kenya now, the opportunity is right here now. Hallelujah. Now, I want to run down briefly into a lot of conversation the Lord has had until now. I know I'll just mention them briefly in a nutshell, but later I'll major on probably four conversations that will anchor our talk today. This message today, right? Now, I posted this on the web some time back. Prophecy alert, the Messiah is coming. This was May, the vision of May 4th, the year 2014. I'm just choosing this as a classical case that will summarize most of the conversation. Now, I'm going to describe this and then from there I'll launch on to the others. Now, in this conversation here, the Lord made me fall asleep one afternoon. So I fell asleep. Then when I fell asleep, 
he made me realize that heaven was open he drew my attention to open heaven heaven open so when i looked up in that dream then i saw that the sun was too bright the sun sol the sun was very bright so i could see that i cannot face i cannot it's too bright i cannot face the rays of the sun because they were really coming and it's very strong and then the next moment i realized it was not the sun because the rays from where i thought it was the sun the rays were going to the horizons of the earth like that like that like that like that such that from where i was it looked more like a pattern of a dome a dome dome shaped as though wow dome shaped you see that follow me on this now and so as i looked up the pattern is like the dome to the horizons of the earth then all of a sudden the voice spoke and when the voice of the lord spoke he said look the messiah is coming but the church he made me know the church out there but the church out there is not yet ready let me repeat this i thought it's the sun and you could see clearly that the rays were beautifully forming a dome i could not face it, it was too bright and then after that then now the voice of the lord speaks he says look the messiah is coming but the church you might be not the church out there but the church out there is not yet ready look at this now at that time immediately i in that dream i i looked left within that dream i looked towards my left then i saw and i know you 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 have an ocean here you you have an ocean line right yeah so it's like being at the ocean in the evening and on the other side it is going to storm in the ocean or, or the other side even a lake but the other side there's going to be a storm in the evening right you understand so as i looked in that way on the other side this is what it did it did pia, pia. again when there is going to be rain a big rainstorm on the other side of the ocean or horizon maybe you have no ocean but horizon and it's in the evening and then you normally hear pia, pia, lightning doing pia, pia, lightning pia, pia. the other side anybody has seen that it was exactly like that so pia, pia, from that side again i said when i looked left towards my left that's what i saw did pia, pia. and when i saw like that and then all of a sudden the church was taken but follow now what follows then again pia, pia. and the church was taken and that when i woke up it taught me something so powerful it made me understand that surely the bible alone is the only book that must be and will be accurately fulfilled on this earth Amen. i i, I learned so much it taught me so much because the bible if you remember says in a flash in the twinkling of an eye so that, that to me for me is different because it became a reality i've seen it but look at this now when the church pia, pia, the church is taken now look at what happens to me i find myself on the dust on the soil on the floor and i was rolling on the soil i'm going to mimic i'm going to repeat verbatim what i did in that dream hallelujah and then i'll explain so i was rolling on the dust on the ground and this is what i was doing i was saying <laughs> i was rolling like that on dust and in the soil 
And as I was doing so, I was crushing my teeth. I was crushing my teeth and grinding my teeth. <laughs> Rolling on the soil doing that. To the extent that when I woke up, in fact, the first place I ran to was the mirrors. Because I thought I had crushed my teeth. I really thought I had crushed them, I had destroyed my teeth. That's just how serious the grinding of teeth was. So, I have already felt the way the church that fails to enter will feel. The Lord made me grind my teeth and roll in the dust and groan and cry and weep and wail and mourn. And I think this becomes a very important platform to launch today's message. To bring forth gravity on this day. Meaning, when this day does take place, it will be an irretrievable day. An irreversible day. Once it takes place, it will have taken place. And that to me underscores the greatest importance of this great love that the Lord is going to lay forward here today to announce it and allow us to prepare before it happens. Are we together? So for me, that was so powerful because, and as you know, if there is going to be an earthquake in a place, normally he takes me there. I don't know whether you know how he speaks with his servant. He takes me there earlier. I leave that day. I run for my life also. If the buildings are falling on people, they fall on me. So, he, so that I can describe to them exactly the pain and everything, the detail of what will happen. That's why for the recent Italian earthquake, when I was in Reggio Emilia, you heard me talking about the blue windows. The blue windows were falling on me. I'm running also for my life there. And surely, yes, when that earthquake took place, then you saw on CNN and BBC, they were talking about the blue windows. The blue windows. When it happened, 2013, and then it happened recently. But you could tell the detail. Because I have lived it. I have seen it. So surely it's for purposes of transmitting to you the full detail. Hallelujah. Now, so, pia, pia, in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, then now, the coming of the Messiah takes place. He takes the church, the holy church. But then, what transpires after that is some irretrievable and irreversible, unbelievable, unbearable pain for the church that fails to enter. That's where I wanted us to begin today before I read the list of most of the visitations and then anchor you on four. Meaning, if we i have seen that dream so which means for sure yes some people will fail to enter the kingdom of god but heaven has no limit the expanse of heaven the infinite possibility of god he can literally take the seven billion people of the earth if they so will to prepare do you understand the wonderful opportunity being availed here that nobody can ever drift so far away that they are irretrievable by the Lord at this hour. Why? Before the door closes. The Bible says, as it was during the day, the time of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Messiah. In the time of Noah, which we are not reading now, Genesis 7 16, he says, People, first of all, people were heedless. They were in so much wickedness. Nobody ever loved righteousness. In fact, Noah alone lived a righteous life before the Lord, blameless before the Lord, right? Which we will read probably later, Genesis 6 9, later. Uh, you see that Noah alone was blameless, building the boat, the sarcasm, the blackmail, the ridicule, the mockery as he built it. But he says that those days of Noah would come back, would repeat here. And you see them repeating, I don't have to tell you. You can see for yourselves. That the days of Noah are repeating across the earth, everywhere, even in Namibia, the reason for which I'm here. Hallelujah. But listen to one thing about the days of Noah. Genesis 7, 16. He says, 
the animals going in were male and female of every creation as created by Jehovah. And he says, then the Lord, I like the Spanish version of the Bible because I preach, I take this message the other side also. In the Spanish version, he says, I'll, I'll, translate, I'll say it, I'll translate it to you. He says, Señor mismo. He says, the Lord himself shut the door. It is not Noah. No. He said, the Lord, the Lord that loves them, created them, blessed them, the one that really says love, grace, is the one who shut the door. The Lord himself shut the door. Not Noah, not, not Noah. Because probably a neighbor, can, Noah is an emotional, he, he is an emotional, emotional constitution. He's an emotion, you know, man is created with an emotional word. So you can easily be taken up by emotions and remember somebody that helped you. I borrowed salt from his home at midnight. He helped me when I had a guest. I didn't have where the guest should go and they helped the guest to sleep. I don't know whatever your neighbor helped you with. He said, the Lord himself shut. He went and shut the door. So that's why I'm saying today is a wonderful day. Because we are going to begin a conversation here that will bring revival and transformation that will create amends that will reform the church in this land. And I know so much about the church in this land. This conversation is key. What we are going to share here is extremely key for Namibia. This one here. Hallelujah. And so you can see from that platform I've set up with that conversation of May, and I've said that look, there was gnashing of teeth, weeping and groaning unbearably, unbelievably. But guess what? The church is gone. Even as that gnashing of teeth continued, I rolled on the dust to fulfill scripture. When I went and found it there, it shocked me very much. But then the church is gone. Hallelujah. And if there is any purpose for which you were called as a pastor, as a servant at whatever capacity you are serving now, as a Christian, is that one day you would enter eternity with God. Not, not to hell. Not at all. To enter heaven. Hallelujah. Listen to me now. So, that means, while there are people that will enter, there is a church that will fail to enter. And look at this now. It will be worse for Christians. I have seen the world even after the church is taken. So please, I've seen so much. The Lord has shown me so much. Even post, after the rapture is taken, it has taken place. I have seen the world. But listen to this now. How horrendous, how terrible will it be for you as a Christian, a Christian follower of Christ, to then now show up in the sin after the church has been taken? Because the devil will mock you then. You say, ah, oh, for me, I used to drink in the bar, in the brothels with women, and I was not Christian. But for you, you were a pastor. Even you, you remained. Did you just understand me? Did somebody just hear me properly? That is the question that will fly across your face. The non-Christian say, but for you, you used to worship the Lord. For me, I was a drunkard. Even you, you remained. And then the devil will say, wow. Then what was the use for the cross and the blood? Did you understand why we have to have this conversation? So that there be no blackmail unto the Lord, right? So I'm going to run through a few conversations because I want to focus on what is this that the church is doing now that can cause her not to enter, right? And then that will be the instruction thereof, right? Hallelujah! Now, um, on April 2nd, the year 2004, now, as the Lord had called me 
And then he brings this encounter to me on April 2nd, 2004. Can I describe the following? Please follow me on this. Now, that April 2nd, this is what transpires in a nutshell, just summary. The Lord lifts me up and brings me right before his humongous throne in heaven. Tremendous glorious throne. And the glory of God covers the throne like a mountain of glory. So I am standing in front of the throne, the throne of Jehovah, and this tremendous glory, pure white glory, Kenya has now seen it happen recently, that type of the glory I was describing for years, now they saw this, but covered the entire throne, but look at this now, then he that sits on the throne, he makes me know that he is seated on the throne. And he also makes me know, as you're going to see in the next, next uh, thing I will say, that the lamb is also seated on the throne. But look at this now. He that sits on the throne, as he makes me know that he is seated, then he also makes me know that the conversation that is going to transpire here to me, in front of the throne, he is paying particular and specific attention to it. So he makes me know that as I stood there. And the glory was so white. And now you, I think you've seen part of it here today. It's like that the glory, I could hear also the sound of holiness. It's tremendous. I, the, it was so holy and so glorious. I could hear the sound of the glory, the sound of holiness. It's kind of like a hissing sound as the glory moved. I, I, like, I don't know how to describe it, but it was like a hissing sound as the glory moved especially that which came close to me around the throne and I could feel, I could hear the sound of glory. Can you imagine this? But look at this now. As I was there, then all of a sudden from the throne comes John the Baptist. And John the Baptist comes all the way from the throne, walking direct to me. And when he comes on my right hand side, he comes towards my right and he stands there. There's a lot of detail. He goes that way. He comes back like as if in a triangle. Goes this way, this way. And then he approaches me. And then, John the Baptist, he tells me the following. And now this is the conversation that he that sits on the throne made me know he will pay particular and specific attention to. So, as John engaged with me, as John began to speak with me, he began to tell me about the Lamb of God. The glorious Lamb of God that came and died for the sins of this world. Follow me on this one very carefully. In fact, even recently, I just received a greater understanding of this visitation. Just recently, after this visitation of transfiguration, is when I understood it even more. And you can imagine how long it took, 2004. And inside this conversation are several prophecies I gave across the earth. And they have been fulfilled. I'm going to mention them bit by bit. So, as John is engaging me and he's, this, he's talking to me, he's telling me that he that sits on the throne has sent him to tell me to go to the four ends of the earth and tell them to prepare the way for the coming of the glorious Lamb of God that died for the sins of man. So, while we are in this conversation here, then the voice of the Lord from the throne speaks. He says, come let me show you what is about to happen to the earth. Then, so as I am there, I am now lifted up from there. It's as if I see a vision within a vision. I'm now lifted up and he takes me to Israel. And of course, it's above. So from above, from the clouds, now I can see Jerusalem. Actually, he took me to Jerusalem above. And then the voice said, yes, Jerusalem is the center of the earth. But look at this now. Then, I saw what was about to happen to the earth. I saw that in Jerusalem, there was going to be a change. In fact, I saw a change of leadership. I know after the dream, I give a prophecy. But let me just discuss as what I saw. I then saw a change of leadership in Jerusalem. And when he showed me the change of leadership in Jerusalem, look at this now. I saw that this government that had come on was a right wing 
right wing government some of you sometimes you call it extremist government or whatever in I'm, I'm talking about in terms of leaning mid center you know right center whatever they're all those philosophies today but i'm talking about right wing government follow me on this this is a key prophecy please do now the right wing government when he showed it to me i saw in fact in fact i saw two changes of leadership two changes Two changes if you follow the prophecy in 2004 you hear me talk about two changes of leadership i saw the first change and then the second change and then the government was now right wing and then because of that change he now takes me to all the capital cities of the world and from above from the clouds i can go to every city i went to ottawa i went everywhere and i saw that the governments of the world were afraid they were anxious about the right-wing government in israel as in how will we discuss with them peace in palestine follow me on this now how are we going to discuss with them the peace of palestine the palestinian question the what 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 there's a whole paradigm a paradox of everything right so they were anxious so i could see from all the capitals that the governments in the world are anxious it is amazing to see the fulfillment of that even recently with some un resolution un discussions what it's amazing to see them today how that has transpired you know but focus on me here then after that anyhow that, at that time th at that time he shows me the death of arafat he sh shows me arafat's tomb and then he takes me across the arab world and it was at night so i could see the light lamps lamps in their homes and i could hear the morning in the arab world <laughs> I, the whole arab world around israel there so these are things i saw before that time arafat was alive though but look at this now after that then i came back and i found myself again standing before the throne of god and john the baptist was still here i also saw as i came back i saw many 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 christians going to jerusalem and i saw them because it was the clouds so i saw them in aircrafts and you know for me it's different now the lord literally puts particular christians i can whom i know inside the aircraft so i could see through the window particular people that's how i knew they are christians going to jerusalem follow me on this this is very powerful going to israel and then and i will explain each of them don't worry about that so then i come back now to the throne again at the throne i found that john the baptist is still here and then at one moment i arrived like this at one moment like this john the baptist becomes transfigured right in front of me here and you, you can see how the entire of his garment everything it transfigured was glorious white everything changed in fact the way i describe it i normally say so brilliant so glorious that even if you touch with a pen you could see that touch that ink and then when i looked at john the baptist transfigured when i looked at myself i saw that i had also been transfigured in front of the throne of the father follow me on this one here recently i understood it better i understood it better recently now look at this now immediately was transfigured then john raised forth his right hand he said behold the lamb of god and out of the throne of god came the tremendous most powerful most glorious most mighty lamb of god and when he came everything became more glorious follow me on this one here so everything became, became more glorious initially there had been a little ridge a small ridge between where i was standing and the throne and when he came that ridge disappeared so now the glory and he came on through and i know that beyond there i'm not able to discuss i've never discussed what happened beyond that point he has not allowed me to do that 
But just catch the most important that when he was transfigured and I checked and I was transfigured, then behold the lamp came. So when I left and began to go all over the earth to give this prophecy, I began to give the following. The prophecy of the two-time change of leadership in Jerusalem. And I said it would be a right-wing government. And because I was in Israel at the time when Benjamin... Okay, me, I saw them all. I saw Isaac Rabin and so forth. At the time of Benjamin Netanyahu was prime minister. So because I knew it was Benjamin Netanyahu. So I used to go all over the world saying, it will be Benjamin Netanyahu too. too. That's what I used to say. Because I, I was there when he became prime minister. But I knew from this before the throne that it would be Benjamin Netanyahu. But so I kept saying it will be Benjamin Netanyahu too. too. But now I even have another understanding because I think there have been elections. So it's two of two or what? Because he's still there. Follow me on this now. So I began in 2004 giving this prophecy, saying it will be Benjamin Netanyahu too. I said, there will be changes of leadership in Jerusalem and the world will be anxious. How do we discuss the peace of Palestine with them? So that prophecy I gave until it was fulfilled. The next prophecy I gave, I said, very soon you will see a lot of Christians going to Jerusalem by flight. But Isaiah saw the same prophecy in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 8. So he says, he says, Who are these that fly along like clouds, like doves, to their nests? So Isaiah the prophet, he saw now this which the Lord was showing me, that many Christians would go to Jerusalem. And Isaiah understood the following, that these were not Jews. These were not Israelites. And remember, at the time when Isaiah is seeing them, the aircraft has not been invented yet. The aeroplane has not been invented yet. So Isaiah now describes, for me it's different, when the event is about to happen, the Lord shows me the aircraft. Me, I know what an aircraft is. So I could see them through the windows. And particular Christians, so I would know they are not Jews. But look at this now. What amazes me is this. When Isaiah sees this, the aircraft is not yet invented. But Isaiah is able to see that they are flying along with the clouds. Just the way the aircrafts do when you fly. And Isaiah is able to see, first of all, the aircraft is designed like a bird. Right? But beyond that, let me get deep into that. Beyond that, look at this now. Beyond that, Isaiah is able to see the following. He's able to look through the windows of the aircraft. The same thing the Lord showed me. And when he looks through the window, he sees what we do, what people do when they're in aircrafts. When they're in aircrafts, always, even if you're sitting in the middle aisle or where, always people like this. Everybody today, today, even yesterday we did it as we came here. Wherever you are sitting, you always do a window. You, you see, everybody wants to see where are we, whatever. Isaiah sees that. Isaiah is able to see them through the window, meaning like birds in the nest. Like birds in the nest. Inside the nest, you know, when you go to birds, when you go to, you, you look at when mother bird has actually built a nest for his young ones, most of the time, they, you understand? So that's what Isaiah sees. That's what he showed me here. And then Isaiah saw that like doves, like doves. But for me it's different. I saw particular Christians, so I could I knew these are Christians, Holy Spirit filled. Because the dove, the dove is the Holy Spirit. The symbolism of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. And by the way, he is. Because sometimes he comes to me as a dove in the dreams. So do you understand what Isaiah saw? And so I began to give this prophecy saying, many, many, many Christians will be flying to Jerusalem. Soon you will see many Christians by aircraft going to Jerusalem. Because I had seen the aircraft, I had seen them in there. 
and I've seen they are not Jews because particular Christians were there. However, look at this now. I was very shocked when Israel observed his 50th anniversary of the creation of the state when all almost all aircrafts from all over the world headed to Israel. I was very shocked at the fulfillment of that. Hallelujah. When I watched it in the news, actually I trembled. It shocked me so much to see how it was unfolding. Many, many Christians, what groups, were traveling, whatever. All of them were going to celebrate the birthday of Israel. The formation, the day Israel was formed. So that to me turned out to be a very amazing thing. But that prophecy fulfilled. And remember, when there was that change of government, and these prophecies that were within, come, let me show you what's about to happen in the world. These prophecies. Then, the Lamb came. The Lamb of God came. So, I kept saying, look, immediately John was transfigured. Then the, he did like this, behold the Lamb of God. And the Lamb came. And I did not want to place any particular prophecy in any place so that people may say, look, the man of God said that after this happens, then the lamb will come. No. You want to give them a chance to prepare all the time, right? Not to wait for a particular thing. So there's a bit of responsibility that had to be executed there. However, then the lamb came. So only recently, when the Lord came and told me, and he said, on this day, I'm going to come and transfigure you. Then I gave the prophecy of transfiguration. And when it happened, then I understood better now. That's why I'm sharing it here. I've understood it better. It's so powerful. Then I understood that we need to prepare. The Messiah is coming. Right? Hallelujah. So there's so much in there. But however, the message stands. Go tell the four ends of the earth to repent and turn away from sin and prepare for the glorious Messiah, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, our Redeemer, our friend, the, the rose of Sharon, hallelujah, the living bread, hallelujah. He is the rock, the living stone. Hmm? He is coming for the church. Wonderful counselor, prince of peace, the king of Zion, he is coming. So the message remains, the foundational message remains, right? So he is coming, beloved. So then 2004, he shows me, now this is about a huge mountain. Okay, can I describe a little bit so you may understand why I get this conversation? When the Lord Jehovah came to call me when I was in Israel, when he came to call me, there are certain events he did around me that were really very outstanding, which I want to share here. Uh, one time he brings me before the throne. And before the throne, then I see the two cherubim of glory. They bring the ark of the new covenant of the Lord. And then when I looked at one side of the ark of the new covenant of the Lord, I saw Moses, the man of God, the friend of God here, next to the mercy seat. And on this same side, next to him was Elijah, the tremendous prophet of the Lord, the terrible prophet. And then on this side, I saw Daniel, the terrible prophet that the lions could not eat, sitting alone, alone on this side. So, you know, for me seeing this, sometimes I ask questions in myself. I was wondering, why is Daniel sitting alone on this side? But anyhow, at that place, then the cloud came and sat there. This same cloud, exact, this one cloud, this same cloud here, exact, came on the golden walkway and, and sat on the mercy seat. And then he said, now I have my four prophets here and you have the fourth prophet when I want to walk up. And the bed shook like this. And he said, and power has been given to you. So when I woke up, then it was 3.26 in the morning, the clock by the bedside. So there's a, it's on the way, I think. The whole thing is on the way for many years. But why do I bring in this? So listen to this now. The Lord began to do things regarding these three prophets around this ministry. Tremendous things they are happening until this day. About these three prophets are happening in this ministry. But look at this now. One of them is this conversation I want to share here. 
he began to show me the dreams and visions of Daniel. I think I've seen almost across them. I don't know whether there's any more left. But he has shown me a lot of the majority of them. And one of them is this. Let me describe very quickly. One time, in a tremendous vision, I just realized there was a very huge, humongous, historic and shocking statue standing before me. And I could see its feet of clay and iron. What Huge, unbelievable. So, so even to see it alone shocked me. And this conversation I'm sharing, two days ago I was on radio. In fact, in the morning before I went to the airport, I was on radio. Again, that night he showed me this. Recently, those who, who, are, who, are, who are plugged in, you know. He has repeated it once. He has shown me twice. Look at this now. This statue was so big so huge that looking at it alone in that vision actually shocked me i was a little bit so shocked at this because i asked what is this however then in that vision let me give the specific in that vision from this direction here while inside there and not like this but came like this came a rock in fact that rock i can even draw it it has a sharp edge it's a, ro it's a rock it's a rock but with sharp edge did not come like this actually came slanting like this a rock came from that side where the lord was i knew the lord was there and that rock smashed that statue until what happened recently happened again recently when he repeated it the dust it became like chaff it disintegrated and the dust the lord made the dust sweep me the dust of that statue sweep me so i could feel the dust Follow me on this now. So, the statue, humongous, unbelievable, made of different metals, and then smashed like this, and the dust even blows on me. And then after that, as I was standing, in, that was then, when the Lord showed it to me in 2004, I thought it was the ocean. Because all of a sudden, the, that rock that smashed it became a huge mountain and I found that I did not have where to stand. I, I thought I was, because it was light blue, bluish down there, I thought it was an ocean. I thought I was going to fall into the ocean. I, it looked like an ocean then. Now I'm wiser. Filled the whole earth. I did not have where to put my feet. I thought I was going to fall like this into the ocean. Only when I went now into the Bible, is when I realized, no, that was actually the, 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 the universe, the other side, not the ocean. And that conversation he had with Daniel is in the book of Daniel chapter 2, verses 34, 35. Then you hear the conversation, the dream. And then the interpretation is verses, the same chapter 2, verses 44, 45. He's saying that at that time, the God of heaven will establish forth a kingdom and he says and that kingdom will not be left to any other people again that rock that small rock that came and smashed that kingdom that the, 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 the mountain built was the kingdom of God the symbolism of the kingdom of God that that rock smashing the statue would create would build establish install that totally covers the entire earth the kingdom of God, the coming kingdom of God. Never walked since birth. Since birth, <laughs> this baby, a crippled baby, has stood up. The baby I was looking for, and the baby was paralyzed. Yes, this hand is still twisted, <laughs> and the Lord has corrected this leg. <laughs> this baby has stood up. This is a developing story, beloved people. Look at it! Look at it! Look at it! Look at it!
many people. Look at this. Look at this. Feels bad. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. The worship to Thank you. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Look at a developing story. A developing story. Come. I was looking for the hand has just stretched my Lord. But this hand has just stretched the hand. This hand has stretched one. Another hand has just stretched. Yes, this one. This one has just stretched. This hand has just stretched. Yes. This one has just stretched yes. this one has just stretched now. This hand has just stretched now. Hallelujah. Look at this now. Look at this. I told you. Jesus is coming. The Messiah is coming. The Messiah is coming. The Messiah is coming. The Messiah is coming. Gloria, 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 Glory, Glory, Glory. Jesus, 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 Jesus. He's walking better. He's even improving. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Revival, revival. is taking the weak ones, the forgotten voices, those who have no legs, and is using them to win nations now. How mighty! What an awesome wonder. Now you can tell the whole nation that there is no God like Jehovah. Yes, tell the other religions that they, there is no God like Jehovah. Only our God is the living God. Tell them because of this. Look at this. <laughs> it's becoming more stable. No, even the other hand has stretched. Look, he will handle. Look, the other hand is now doing like this. The first has this already held. Look at this wonder. What do you have to say? <laughs> it's so beautiful when he falls. It confirms he's not walked. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is mighty, 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 mighty. As we begin this healing service, let the cripples now get up and walk. Let the blind now open their eyes and see. And I command you, deaf ears, to now hear me in the mighty name of Jesus. Paralytics, spinal cord injuries, everything. Everybody receive your healing now. And right now I'm lifting up my left prophetic arm towards heaven to help you. Everybody do what you could not do. That is where you should begin from. Hallelujah. Try to do what you could not do before. Miracles of Jesus, just keep walking, keep walking, my daughter, keep walking. I may not speak your language, but have you been touched? How are you, my daughter? What's going on? 
Uh, I can't walk properly. But now? No, I've been touched. You have been touched? Yes. And now you can walk? Yeah. <laughs> but that's a big thing. <laughs> come over. I may not understand things. Come, come, come quickly. Come to me. Come, baby. Let's walk. Yes, I'm going to walk with you. Let us walk in this direction. I think there is a situation here. <laughs> there is a big situation here. I may not know what happened, but Jesus knows much, right? <laughs> you saw her? You... I saw her. She was not walking. She was... That, that's why I always want the cameras to come early and record them. You recorded? She could not walk, my Lord. I recorded her. She was very weak. That's why I always send the cameras early. That Jesus may get maximum glory. Come over. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Ah, hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. You, you said it happened to you right there? Yes, it happened from there. From where? From my seat when I was sitting. Where I was sitting. How did it happen? I, I, I can't find balance when I walk. Yes. For how many years? Uh, for a year now. For a year now? Yeah. And then today what happened there? I could walk on my own. With, uh, with, on, you? on my own without leaning on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Just walk because I want the world to see what has happened here today. Just slowly by slowly, more stable because now you're walking with me. And the glory of the Lord will support you. Bit by bit and more stable. And more stable and more stable. This shows that the Lord walked here today. He did some serious work. I want the world to see. Look at the things that have happened in Namibia. So, you're telling me the doctors, according to their own writings, they went to school, they read medicine, right? Review the compendium of medicine. All these big books, right? And they looked at your case and they said, no, you have lost it. You have lost balance, right? And they said, that's it. They're calling it a myelopathy. Yeah, there's a... <coughs> it, because it's on, on, it's on the membrane. Yeah, I know. Yes. There's an inflammation in the spinal cord. And uh, they're putting me on... At your age, right? Yeah. How old are you? I'm 29. At your age, they were saying, that is it. Yeah. It is gone. Yeah, and they kept me on medication and I'm still on medication. That medication ended today, right? Yes. And day by day I'm losing balance and also strength. And sometimes uh, the legs get stiff and also my voice also gets stiff uh, sometimes. And Your voice gets stiff? Yeah. Said that you cannot speak well? Yeah. So it's touching the central nervous system, if we understand right. Yeah, exactly. But can you sing with me? voice is normal now it's now normal and then you are you regained balance you, you told me that there's a moment when the lord touched you and you just something like electric what is it that touch electricity or something uh, I, I feel a, a little bit of a trigger in the muscle a trigger yeah something like uh, uh, the muscle that is pulled or something of that nature and then you got up and then i got up and the pain is over yeah, it's over now. It's over now. Jesus has healed me. He has healed you. Yeah, I'm thankful. You're thankful.